welcome to Nick Nass Corner. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Lord of Chaos and Crown of Swords. I read these books back to back, so I am not quite sure where one ends and one begins because it's all blurred in my head. So that's why I'm going to do both of these in one review for you because they are book six and seven of The Wheel of Time. I have been on a major Wheel of Time kick after taking a year-long hiatus from the first four books. The Fires of Heaven really like kicked it up a notch, and that was my favorite entry. And I would say Lord of Chaos is just as good as Fires of Heaven. There is so much going on right now, it is wild. Also, I need to ask, why is... Lewis there and sometimes the voice of reason for Ran when he's like, hey, don't use Balefire. And Ran's just like, Balefire, Balefire, Balefire. Not complaining. I love the use of Balefire in the story. I think it holds real consequences and it's very interesting to me. Um, I did enjoy that we got some story on Perrin uh, in Lord of Chaos. Wonderful because He's my favorite character. We also got more of him in Crown of Swords as well. We found out that Loyal is set up to be wed, and he feels he's too young to be wed, which means he's just over 90 years old or something like that. <laughs> um, we got to see Egwene raised to the Armalin seat as uh, the opposition to Elida, who is the Armalin seat over at the tower. I don't think she's picked out an Aja or a color there, but I did find that all very interesting, that entire portion. I am excited to see where that goes. I also got to say, in Crown of Swords, this is very much where I have fallen in love with Matt and Nynaeve. The two of them I have not cared for previously in the series. Uh, Nynaeve, I have found her annoying at times, and Matt, I have found him to be um, just almost non-existent in the story. He's there, but he just doesn't hold weight to what he was doing previous to the Crown of Swords. I mean, aside from the dagger incident, but, like, that was it. Um, so, to see him take the forefront and be the general for Rand, for seeing him go into collect Elaine to seat her as uh, the queen of Andor and Camelon. Uh, I just find it so interesting to see how well Robert Jordan can really kick up a character's persona within the books as he's writing them, because Nynaeve, she really came into her own within the Lord of Chaos. Uh, actually, I would argue probably Fires of Heaven is where she started to get good for me, me personally. I'm sure there's all kinds of people out there who absolutely loved her from the get-go. Um, the braid tugging killed me in the first four books. It really overshadowed everything else for me and just annoyed me to no end. There has been less braid tugging. Gotta say I'm very happy about it. It happens, but not as much. Um, now, only if we could stop getting Elaine sniffing the air, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Those are just my only gripes I have with the story is that he's sometimes repetitive with each character's little mannerisms. And uh, I get it, they're mannerisms, but like, once a book is fine. You don't need to do it many times. Uh, other than that, he has been on fire. Uh, I have heard that Crown of Swords is where the slog starts. And perhaps that's why I didn't care for the Crown of Swords as much as I liked Lord of Chaos and Fires of Heaven. Although, in saying that, I still found Crown of Swords to be a very interesting read. Lots of information. And like I said, it's where I personally have found love for Nynaeve and Matt as characters. I absolutely love them in this book and love what they're doing. I am wholeheartedly looking forward to their futures within the story. Um, I found it interesting that Lan just, like, for how badass of a warrior he is, he rolls over so easy for Nynaeve. And I'm okay with that because he is in love with her. And I get that. 
But she's like, we're going to get married. And he's like, oh, no, we're not. And she's like, yes, we are. And he's like, yes, we are. I, it just almost doesn't fit him, but at the same time it does. So there is that. And I am really enjoying uh, Nynaeve and Lance's relationship. I do find it quite interesting. Another one that I was super excited for and my favorite pairing with Rand is definitely Min. Um, in Lord of Chaos, we got to see Min and Rand get a little bit closer and uh, Crown of Swords, they are very close. And Min is one of those characters that every time she's on page, I absolutely love her. She pops off. And that has been from the get-go of the Eye of the World. I've loved Min. And I just found that her character has got immensely better. And I think she, for me, I feel like she is the best one for Rand. Better than Avianda and better than Elaine. Um, is that going to stay that way? I don't know. Robert Jordan seems to... Uh, do a great job at lifting characters up just when you think that you don't care about them that much. And he does a great job at fleshing out characters as well uh, when he has the time to give them that time. And I can totally see Avianda becoming more of a favorite than Min for me. And potentially Elaine as well. I do really like Elaine. I love her relationship she has with... Um, uh, the silver bowed archer. Her name is escaping me. Oh no. Internal crisis. I guess we'll never know. Anyway. Um, I, I really enjoy uh, what they're doing in the pairings of the warders and everything for our characters. And we also found out that warders usually don't come uh, around to um, Ace to Die for years sometimes. And here we have Elaine and Nynaeve already getting their warders. And it was Brigetta, by the way, is Elaine's warder. The name just came to me. Uh, yeah, she is phenomenal. I really love Brigetta. She is a great character within the story as well. And uh, one of my favorite parts, actually, from The Lord of Chaos and Fires of Heaven was the traveling with Nynaeve, Elaine, and uh, Brigetta, as well as Tom and all of them. So, yeah, all these characters have been phenomenal. I have really enjoyed the series. I am hoping, if everything still goes well, that I will complete this series this year. I have been wanting to wrap up a bunch of series on my own, trying to get some stuff finished up because I have a ton of started series and not a lot of finished ones. Um, so that is going to be a main priority going forward. Um, I want to know what some of your favorite parts of The Lord of Chaos and Crown of Swords have been for you. And where are you at in Wheel of Time? Have you finished all the books? Are you going to finish them this year? Or have you long finished them a long time ago? And if it has been a long time ago, who's your favorite character overall? Don't tell me why. Just tell me who's your favorite character overall. Because I definitely want to look out for them and see what they're all about. Because that is one of the best things about Robert Jordan is he has so many characters. I don't know how many there are, but there are a lot of named characters within the series, and they show up at random times. Sometimes they're there forever, and sometimes they show up for two seconds, and then they're gone, and they show up later on for two minutes, and then they're gone. So it's a very interesting that way. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming to the corner. I look forward to talking to you more. Remember, I have a link to my Discord down below. I'm always looking for more people to talk about stuff like this with. And if you want to follow along with my Wheel of Time journey, that's also a great place to talk to me. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.